Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. In the matchless name of Yahoshua Mashiach, this is Yahweh's servant, Reginald M. Graham. And we're delighted to be able to come to you once again with another message from the word of Yahweh. This has come out of her, my people, broadcast with your host, Reginald M. Graham. I'm just a voice crying in this end time wilderness, preparing the way of Yahweh, making straight paths for our Messiah, Yahoshua Mashiach. The Bible tells us in the book of Matthew, chapter 24 and verse 14, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness to all nations, and then shall the end come. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that verse is being fulfilled in your very ears on this day. Now, I want to warn you, this broadcast is not for the faint of heart. We bring the truth raw and uncut. If you are a truth seeker, if you love truth, you have tuned in to the right broadcast. We don't beat around the bushes. We don't tiptoe through the tulips, but we let the chips fall where they may. And we do not apologize for declaring the truth. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we thank Yahweh, amen, for allowing us to uh, come before you once again. And most of you that are listening to me, uh, you're in your Sabbath. Glory to Yahweh. Most of our um, listeners, our viewers, amen, uh, comes from the U.S., Babylon, and we're so grateful, for, amen, for that. Well, we're going to get right into our message. There is an event that is mentioned in the books of the prophets that is mentioned more than any other event in the first covenant writings. This event is it's called the Messiah's 1,000-year reign. Scholars and theologians call this event the millennium. During this time, there will be a peace on the earth, and there will be no wars or world conflicts. The anti-Messiah, during his rule, will establish a superficial peace. But Yahoshua will establish an authentic and genuine peace. First Thessalonians 5 and 3, Apostle Paul wrote, For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Apostle Paul here is making reference to the anti-Messiah's rule. The anti-Messiah's rule will be short-lived. It will be only 42 months or three and a half years. After the end of three and a half years, the Messiah will, will return and destroy the anti-Messiah's kingdom. 2 Thessalonians 2 and 8 declares, and then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the master shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. We see here that the Messiah will consume the anti-Messiah or the beast, the son of perdition, the man of sin, whatever you want to call him, with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy him with the brightness of his second coming. The anti-Messiah world peace will be superficial and short-lived. Daniel 8 and 25 declares, and through his policy, also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand, and he shall magnify himself in his heart, and by peace shall destroy many. We see here that the anti-Messiah by peace shall destroy many. In other words, the anti-Messiah will persuade many to follow him with his establishment of peace on the earth, but it will be superficial and short-lived. Revelation 13 and 11 declares, and I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. The second beast will exercise all the power of the first beast. The anti-messiah will appear as a lamb, 
A lamb is a peaceful creature. The anti-Messiah will appear as a peaceful lamb, but he will actually, ladies and gentlemen, be as a dragon. You know, Satan always try to emulate Yahweh, ladies and gentlemen. He always tries to emulate Yahweh. And we see here that this beast uh, will uh, appear as a lamb, ladies and gentlemen, but he will speak as a dragon. We know that Yahoshua Messiah is the lamb of Elohim, ladies and gentlemen. And he told us in the book of John, um, chapter number 16 and 33, he said, my peace I leave with you, my peace, amen, I give unto you, not as the world giveth, ladies and gentlemen. He said uh, um, uh, that my peace that I leave with you, my peace I give you. Then he said, um, in the world, you shall have tribulation. He said, in me, you shall have peace. And the world, you shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. Bless the name of Yahweh. So we see here in Revelation 13 and 11, it declares, and I beheld another beast coming out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. The second beast will exercise all the power of the first beast. The anti-Messiah will appear as a lamb. A lamb is a peaceful creature. The anti-Messiah will appear as a peaceful lamb, but he will actually be as a dragon, ladies and gentlemen. Daniel 11 and 21 declares, and in his estate shall stand up a vile person to whom they shall not give the honor of the kingdom, but he shall come in peaceably and attain the kingdom by flatteries. Once again, we see here that the anti-Messiah shall pretend to be a peaceful man, but he will actually be deadly, ladies and gentlemen. He will cause havoc, chaos, confusion, ladies and gentlemen, and much sorrow and pain. However, Yahoshua, the Messiah, will have an everlasting, genuine, peaceful kingdom. Satan will immolate the Messiah's kingdom through the man of sin, the anti-Messiah. During Yahoshua's millennial or 1,000 year reign is when Isaiah 9 verses 6 through 7 will be fulfilled. Isaiah 9 verses 6 through 7 declares, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty Elohim, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. Only Yahoshua Mashiach will bring peace to this earth, ladies and gentlemen, an everlasting, genuine peace. The Antichrist, the Anti-Messiah, rather, will bring a superficial, uh, false peace, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, he will only rule for uh, three and a half years, 42 months. His peace, amen, which will be superficial, will be short-lived. But Yahoshua will bring an everlasting peace upon this planet. Bless the name of Yahweh. It says, um, he shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the mighty, ever, uh, mighty Elohim, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. Then verse 7 said, of the increase of his government, and peace, <clears throat> excuse me, shall be no end. You see that? Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. He will have an everlasting, eternal peace, ladies and gentlemen, under his reign. Upon the throne of David, 
<clears throat> upon his kingdom to order it, it. The scripture we read in the Gospels where the people call Yahoshua the son of David. So Yahoshua came through the very, <clears throat> ladies and gentlemen, posterior of David. Glory to Yahweh. He was from the tribe of Judah. Matter of fact, the Bible said he's the root and offspring of David. He's the line from the tribe of Judah. The scripture says, upon the throne of David, upon his kingdom, to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The, the seal of the zeal of Yahweh of hosts will perform this. We see here that of the Messiah's government and peace, there shall be no end. Now, how do we know that the Messiah's kingdom will last a period of 1,000 years upon the earth? Now, how do we know that the Messiah's kingdom will last a man, 1,000 years upon the earth, ladies and gentlemen, because the, the old covenant scriptures or old covenant writings says nothing about, ladies and gentlemen, how long his uh, rule, his reign will be upon this earth, ladies and gentlemen. It tells us there will be peace, no wars, no world conflicts during the time that Yahoshua Mashiach reigns. But we find nowhere in the Old Covenant writings, um, in the, um, uh, the law, in the prophets, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's nowhere we see where it says his, how many years or how long his reign will B. So it's not in the Torah nor, nor the Tanakh, but in the New Covenant writings, we see, amen, it tells us how long that the Messiah's reign on this earth will be, ladies and gentlemen. Now, how do we know that the Messiah's kingdom will last a period of 1,000 years upon the earth? Revelation chapter 20 and verse 4. Apostle John wrote, And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them, and I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Yahoshua and for the word of of Elohim, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with the Messiah a thousand years. The elect who went through the great tribulation, and those of the elect who were beheaded for the witness of Yahoshua and for the word of Elohim, which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, nor had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. They lived and reigned with the Messiah a thousand years. This is how we know that the Messiah's reign will be a thousand years. Verse 5 declares, But the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. The second coming of the Messiah will be the first resurrection. Only those who will be caught up with Yahoshua in the clouds and the air at the second coming of Yahoshua will reign with him, ladies and gentlemen, will reign with the Messiah on the earth. Only those who were saved in the new covenant period will reign with the Messiah 
on the earth for 1,000 years. No one from Adam to all those who died under the old covenant period will reign with the Messiah 1,000 years on the earth. Remember, Yahushua said, ladies and gentlemen, they that are first shall be last, and they that are last shall be first. So those that live in the new covenant uh, period, ladies and gentlemen, are the last. Those that live from Adam Ladies and gentlemen, until the end of the first covenant, the old covenant, they were first. So the scriptures say they did a first shall be last and they did a last shall be first. So no one from Adam to all those who died under the old covenant period would reign with the Messiah 1000 years on the earth. Only the elect who died and lived in the new covenant period will reign with the Messiah 1,000 years on the earth. Those from Adam to all those who died under the first covenant will partake of the second resurrection, ladies and gentlemen. The second resurrection will take place in Revelation chapter 20 at the white throne judgment. Now, we've been taught that everybody that, that's at the white throne judgment will be uh, cast into the lake of fire. But that is not correct because the Bible says at the white throne judgment, when, 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 those, when the people stand before Yahweh, the scripture says, Everyone whose names were not written in the book of life shall be cast in the lake of fire. But there will be some that names that are written in the book of life at the white throne judgment. All the patriarchs, matriarchs, all those at, uh, uh, that died under the first covenant will stand before Yahweh at the white throne judgment. Now, the Bible tells us, ladies and gentlemen, amen, if you judge yourself, you will not be judged. The Bible says in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 10, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Mashiach, that we shall receive the things done in our body, whether they are good or or bad, ladies and gentlemen, knowing the terror of Yahweh, we persuade men. So the elect, ladies and gentlemen, we are at the, the judgment seat of the Messiah now, ladies and gentlemen, because the Bible said they, um, we must all appear before the judgment seat of Mashiach to receive the things done in our body, whether they are good or bad. The scripture said that judgment must first begin at the house of Elohim. Praise the name of Yahweh. Amen for the truth. So the scriptures say, judge yourself that you be not judged, ladies and gentlemen. And so we, the elect, Yahweh's chosen, will not have to stand before Yahweh at the white throne judgment, ladies and gentlemen. Praise Yahweh, because if we judge ourselves, we won't be judged. The scripture tells us. Revelation chapter 20, verses 1 through 2, during the Messiah's 1,000-year reign, the scripture tells us that Satan, the devil, that old red dragon, that deceiver, that old, that old serpent, ladies and gentlemen, and his demons will be shut up in the bottomless pit. Ladies and gentlemen, verse 3. Let's look at uh, Revelation chapter uh, 20. I'm going to start with verse 1. Let's look at Revelation uh, chapter 20. And we'll start here with verse number 1. It says, And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottom, bottomless pit. This pit is bottomless. So whoever is cast in this pit, when Satan and his devils and demons whores are cast in this pit they're going to fall forever and be tormented and a great chain in his hand so this angel had a great chain and he laid hold on the dragon that old serpent which is the devil and satan and bound him a thousand years ladies and gentlemen bound him a thousand 
years. During the Messiah's 1,000 year reign, Satan and his demons, his whores, will be shut up in the bottomless pit. Then in verse number three, it says, and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loose a little season. During the Messiah's 1,000 year reign, ladies and gentlemen, Satan, praise Yahweh, and his whores will not be on, these, on the earth to tempt and deceive the nations. But after the 1,000 years are over, Satan and his whores will deceive the nations again. Now, you know, we, read, we read this and it says Satan will be a man shut up in the bottomless pit. They don't say anything about his, his devils, his demons, his fallen angels, ladies and gentlemen. But it's making reference, when you see Satan, it's making reference to uh, uh, Satan's kingdom, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the uh, spiritual wickedness in high places, rulers of darkness, ladies and gentlemen. And spiritual wickedness is, and all of these things, when you see the word Satan, many times, amen, it's talking, not just talking about Satan, amen, uh, individual, but his kingdom, his whores and his devils, ladies and gentlemen, his whores or devils and demons. Now, in Zechariah, it, it lets us know. Ladies and gentlemen, in Zechariah chapter 13, it lets us know that not only is Satan going to be um, bound and shut up in this bottom of this pit for a thousand years, but his hordes too. Look what it says here in, in the book of uh, Zechariah chapter 13, verse 2. And it shall come to pass in that day, says Yahweh of hosts, that I will cut off the names of the idols out of the land, and they shall no more be remembered. Listen to this. And also I will cause the prophets and the unclean spirits to pass out of the land during uh, the Messiah's 1,000 year reign, his millennial reign. Uh, reign upon the earth. Bless the name of Yahweh. In Isaiah chapter 2, it goes into detail about this 1,000 year reign of the Messiah. In the book of Isaiah chapter number 2, ladies and gentlemen, and I want to uh, draw your attention to verse number one Isaiah chapter 2, and I want to draw your attention to verses number 1. It says, the word of Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. It shall come to pass in the last days, this has, has not been fulfilled yet, that the mountain of Yahweh's house shall be established, Mount um, Moriah, ladies and gentlemen, the same place where uh, Abraham sacrificed Isaac, amen, on the holy mount there in Jerusalem, that the mountains of Yahweh's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow unto it. The dome of the rock, amen, and the other holy place there, for, the, for Islam, they're going to be obliterated, amen, during this time. It says in verse 3, And many people shall go and say, Come ye, and let us go up to the mountain of Yahweh, there in Jerusalem, to the holy mount, to the house of Elohim of Jacob. The scripture tells us in Zechariah that, uh, that Yahushua will build, amen, the fourth temple, ladies and gentlemen, Glory to Yahweh in there in Jerusalem. Glory to and it will be the last temple that will be built. There's one going to be built in these end times. And that temple is going to be demolished by the second coming of Yahushua Mashiach. And that temple, uh, the, the anti-Messiah is going to sit in that temple showing himself that he is Elohim. And that temple is going to be obliterated, decimated, amen, at the second coming 
of Yahushua Mashiach. Now in verse 3 here in Isaiah chapter 2, and many people shall go and say, come ye and let us go up to the mountain of Yahweh, to the house of of Elohim of Jacob. The Bible said in Habakkuk, ladies and gentlemen, that the glory of the latter house will be greater than that of the former. So this house that's going to be built, amen, in these last days, ladies and gentlemen, the fourth temple, glory to Yahweh, is going to be more splendid, more magnificent, more beautiful, more glorious than Solomon's temple. Glory to Yahweh. And it says, and he will teach us. Yahoshua is going to teach us his ways and we will walk in his paths for out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of Yahweh from Jerusalem. So where would we be? Where would the saints be, the elect? Well, the Bible say he will make us kings and priests, ladies and gentlemen. And so we're going to be the priests and we're going to be kings and we're going to be governors and rulers and we will reign with him in his, his administration over the jurisdiction of this earth. So we're going to have to, we're going to be busy during the millennium, ladies and gentlemen, because we got a lot to do. Some of us will be priests. Some of us will be governors. We will rule, make sure everything, amen, will be done in order, ladies and gentlemen. Bless the name of Yahweh. Verse 4, and he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people. And they shall beat their swords in plowshares. There won't be no more wars, ladies and gentlemen, no more world conflicts. Glory to Yahweh. And their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. The Prince of Peace will be in the world. He will be a man sitting on the throne of David there in Jerusalem, ladies and gentlemen. So there won't be any wars, no conflict, because the Prince of Peace will be on this earth. O house of Jacob, come ye and let us walk in the light of Yahweh. And also in the book of Isaiah chapter 11, we're moving on. And verse 1, and there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse. A branch shall grow out of his roots and the spirit of Yahweh shall rest upon him. The spirit of wisdom, this is the Messiah. And understanding the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of Yahweh. And shall make him of quick understanding and the fear of Yahweh. And he shall not judge at the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. But with righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth, and he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. There's some uh, 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 Hebrew Israelites teach this is David, amen. They teach that uh, this is talking about David himself. No, this is talking, David is the Messiah. No, this is talking about Amen. Yahoshua Mashiach, which the, who the Christians call Jesus Christ, ladies and gentlemen. It says, and he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. And righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins and faithfulness the girdle of his reign. During this time, Yah, Yahweh will uh, re-resurrect David, David will sit as king, ladies and gentlemen, during this time. He will be the only one, ladies and gentlemen, from Adam to those who died under the old covenant that will be resurrected. David, the scripture tells us that David will be king in the earth. We can read this, ladies and gentlemen. Let me, let me, let me share it with you in the book of Ezekiel. And we'll move on here. Thank you for your patience. In the book of Ezekiel, bless the name of Yahweh. Uh, let's look at Ezekiel uh, chapter 37. It tells us in verse 21, And David my servant shall be king over them, and they all shall have one shepherd. 
They shall also walk in my judgments and observe my statutes and do them. So David, my servant, shall be king over them. Now, there's Christians that believe that this David is talking about Yahoshua because he is the son of David. This is what it's making reference to, but I don't believe that. I believe that not only would Yahoshua reign, but David would reign with him as king, amen, over this earth ladies and gentlemen okay let, let's move on verse 5 of Isaiah 11 and 5 and righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins and faithfulness the girdle of his reign now look at verse 6 the wolf also shall dwell with the lamb and the leopard shall lie down with the kid now now during this period amen things will go back ladies and gentlemen to when Yahweh first created man and the beasts of the earth amen before the serpent showed up ladies and gentlemen and adam and eve glory to yahweh ate of the fruit glory to yahweh and yahweh cursed the serpent he cursed eve and he cursed adam then the eyes was open and then guess what the animals amen were impacted they were affected then animals start killing one another eating one another began begin to become bloodthirsty ladies and gentlemen but before that even the animals got along and peace and harmony in a in a utopia so the world would go back to a utopia like it was when yahweh first created man the animals and man, ladies and gentlemen. Remember, Adam named all the animals of the field. And we see the wolf also shall dwell with the lamb. You know, today, you can't get a wolf and a lamb together. That ain't going to work. But during the 1,000-year the reign of the Messiah, during the millennium, this will take place, ladies and gentlemen. And the leopard shall lie down with the goat, the kid. You, can't, you won't see that happening today. And the calf and the young lion. You won't see a calf and a young lion lying down together. And the fatling together. And a little child shall lead them. And the cow and the bear shall feed. <laughs> My goodness, you're talking about a utopia. Amen. Because they won't be bloodthirsty. They won't see a man. That, ladies and gentlemen. Listen to this. And the, the, their young ones shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like an ox. Then the animal's going to go back to a vegetarian state. The animals are going to be vegetarian. When Yahweh first created man and the animals, we were vegetarians, ladies. We didn't eat any meat. Glory to Yahweh. And so everything is going to go back, amen, to this utopia. Bless the name of Yahweh. Praise his holy name. And the suckling child shall play on the hole of an ass. And the weaned child, an ass is a snake, a serpent. Look at this. And the weaned child shall put his hand on the cockatrice den. That's a viper, ladies and gentlemen. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain. For the earth shall be full of the knowledge of Yahweh as the waters cover the sea. My goodness. And in that day there shall be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for an ensign, this is the Messiah, of the people, to it shall the Gentiles seek, and his rest shall be glorious, and it shall come to pass in that day that Yahweh shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people, which shall be, these Israelites, left from Assyria, and from Egypt, Egypt, and from Pathras, and Cush, Ethiopia, and from Elam, and from Shinar, Iraq, and from Hamath, and from the islands of the sea. Bless the name of Yahweh. Amen for this truth. So let's move on to Daniel chapter 2. Daniel chapter 2, bless Yahweh, and verse number 44. Daniel 2 and 44. We're talking about Yahoshua's 1,000 year reign. This is just a short study, amen, concerning the millennium or Yahoshua Mashiach 1,000 year reign. Now, let me, un let me explain this to you. The, the name millennium derived from 1,000. The, the, the word millennium is not found in the Bible. The term millennium is not in the Bible. The, this is what 
scholars and theologians have adopted the term millennial, ladies and gentlemen, because it's a thousand years. Glory to Yahweh. So here in Daniel chapter number 2, verse 44, and in the days of these kings shall Elohim of heaven set up a kingdom. Here go again. This is the Yahoshua's kingdom, which shall never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms. And it shall stand forever. For as much as thou sawest the stone which was cut out of the mountain without hands. Ladies and gentlemen, this, this is a, a, a diamond mountain, ladies and gentlemen. Yahoshua is that stone, that diamond stone, glory to Yahweh, that adamant stone that was cut out of this diamond mountain without hands. And that it break, you know, the diamond is the hardest substance on the earth. And look what it said. That it break in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold, and the Great Elohim have made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter, and the dream is certain, and the interpretation thereof is sure. Now we want to go to Daniel chapter 7 and uh, verse number 13. We thank Yahweh for your patience, ladies and gentlemen. Here in Daniel chapter 7, beginning with verse 13, I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds, this is the Messiah of heaven, and came to the Ancient of Days, this is Yahweh, and they brought him near before him. We find this in Revelation chapter 4 and 5. And there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations, and language should serve him, Yahoshua. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. Bless the name of Yahweh. Amen for this truth. So we want to go now to Zechariah chapter 14. Zechariah chapter 14 and oh listen this this message is impregnated ladies and gentlemen you can't exhaust uh this message glory to Yahweh it's just so much but we're doing a short amen study on Yahoshua Mashiach's uh 1000 year Rain. Okay, Zechariah 14, verse 16. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the king, Yahweh of hosts, and to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. The Feast of Tabernacles will be restored during this time. And it shall be that whosoever will not come up of all the families of the earth. Now, notice now, uh, Satan and his horde's going to be uh, shut up in the bottomless pit for a thousand years. But there's going to be some, still some rebels. There's going to be some people that's going to rebel, ladies and gentlemen, against Yahweh. It says, and it shall be, be that whosoever will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the king, Yahoshua, Yahweh of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. They're going to have a plague. Yahweh will send a plague if they won't come up in worship. And if the family of Egypt go not up and come not, ladies and gentlemen, if the, the Africans, glory to Yahweh, the people of Akabulan, the true name of the continent of Africa, Akabulan, go not up and come not, that have no rain. They won't have no rain. There shall be the plague wherewith Yahweh will smite the heathen that come not up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. This shall be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all nations that come not up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. Like, like, like I said, it's going to be some rebellious folk still because this old flesh, the devil ain't going to be here to deceive or tempt, but we still got this flesh, this atomic nature, huh? This atomic nature. Glory to Yahweh. And that day shall there be upon the bales of the horses, holiness unto Yahweh, and the pots in Yahweh's house shall be like 
the bowls before the altar. Yea, every pot in Jerusalem and in Judah shall be holiness unto Yahweh of hosts, and all they that sacrifice shall come and take of them and see therein. Yahweh is going to reestablish, ladies and gentlemen, sacrifice, animal sacrifice, oblations, peace offerings. Look at this. And in that day, there shall be no more Canaanite in the house of Yahweh of hosts. Bless the name of Yahweh. Amen for this truth. Now, we want to go to Isaiah 66. Isaiah 66. Glory to Yahweh. Amen. In Isaiah chapter number 66. We thank Yahweh for your patience. Uh, we're going to get there. Isaiah 66. And I want to draw your attention to verse 23. Look what it says. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon, to another and from one Sabbath to another shall all flesh come to worship before me, says Yahweh. So the new moon is going to be uh, reestablished, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the Sabbath still going to be, amen, incorporated. Shall all flesh come to worship before me, says Yahweh. And they shall go forth, now look at this, and look upon the carcass of the men that have transgressed against me, those that wouldn't come up and worship the king. For their worms shall not die, neither shall their fire be quenched. So while they're going up to worship, amen, the Messiah, while they're going up to worship the king, ladies and gentlemen, they're going to see all these dead carcasses, these bodies, and they're going to see the worms and the fires, amen, uh, burning them. And it won't quench, just like hell, where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth and the worm dies not and the fire is never quenched. But they're going to be able to see this on the earth, ladies and gentlemen, to warn them, if y'all do this, this is going to happen to you. This is going to be your fate, your demise also. Verse 24, it says, and they shall go forth and look upon the carcass of the men that have transgressed against me, for their worms shall not die, neither shall their fire be quenched, and they shall be in a horn to all flesh, a warning. <laughs> you're always going to want now if you don't come up to Jerusalem and worship the king this is going to be your fate glory to Yahweh bless the name of Yahweh amen there are four events that must take place before Yahoshua's 1000 year reign these four events have not taken place as of yet there's four events that must take place that have not taken place Ladies and gentlemen, as of yet, this first event is the great tribulation. The great tribulation have not taken place yet. The second event is the second coming of the Messiah. The second coming of the Messiah has not taken place yet. The third event is the wrath of Elohim. The wrath of Elohim has not yet taken place, having started, having begun. The fourth event is the Battle of Armageddon. The Battle of Armageddon has not taken place yet. So there's four events that must take place before, amen, the millennial period, ladies and gentlemen. And these four events, the first is the Great Tribulation. The second is the Wrath of Elohim. Bless the, I'm sorry, the second is the uh, the second coming of Yahoshua, the third is the wrath of Elohim, and the fourth is the battle of Armageddon. After the battle of Armageddon, then the Messiah will establish his 1,000 year reign upon the earth, ladies and gentlemen. And we will reign with him, the elect, as kings and priests. Let me read this and we will close this message uh, Revelation chapter 1, it tells us in verse 5, and from Yahoshua Mashiach, who is the faithful witness, the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that love us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and have made us kings 
and priest unto Elohim and his father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. So we will be a part of Yahushua's administration, his cabinet members, ladies and gentlemen, and glory to Yahweh. Amen. His government and his ministry of priests, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, some of us will be uh, uh, priests. Some of us will reign as rulers, as governors, as kings with our Messiah to help him administrate, ladies and gentlemen. Because there's going to be a lot of people still on the earth, and it's, this is a large planet. So we're going to be put in different regions, put in different regions over the earth, ladies and gentlemen, to help Yahoshua rule a man over this earth. Bless the name of Yahweh. And then we'll close here in Revelation chapter 20. Revelation chapter number 20. Bless the name of Yahweh, amen, for this truth. It tells us in verse number four, and I saw thrones and they that sat upon them and judgment was given unto them and I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Yahoshua, those that went through the great tribulation, and for the word of Elohim, which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. Now listen to this. And they lived and reigned with the Messiah a thousand years. So they reigned with him. So we're going to share a man in his administration. We're going to be, some of us will be governors and rulers, ladies and gentlemen, mayors, glory to Yahweh. Uh, 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 we'll be a part of his cabinet, his administration, and some will be priests, ladies and gentlemen, glory to Yahweh. They would establish a man, Yahweh's priesthood upon this earth. Bless the name of Yahweh. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I see my time has got away from me. We thank Yahweh for you tuning in with us once again with another message from the word of Yahweh. We thank Yahweh for what he is doing in these end, end times. And we would appreciate if you would like, share, and subscribe, ladies and gentlemen. We thank Yahweh, amen, for our increase in uh, uh, subscribers and amen viewers and our comments we're so grateful for that ladies and gentlemen we appreciate yahweh amen for that sometime people subscribe to us then they unsubscribe because i say something they don't like hey when they hear a message they love they like man they get excited but did i come back and say something that they don't agree with they don't concur with they unsubscribe me, but we thank Yahweh. Amen. You know, if we had all the people that unsubscribe us, we probably had a thousand people that have unsubscribed us, ladies and gentlemen, in a year and a half. Bless the name of Yahweh. But that's good. That's okay, ladies and gentlemen. You can't uh, uh, please everybody, you know. You know, you can't win them all. Bless the name of Yahweh. Amen. And we realize that bless Yahweh. But we thank Yahweh. And also you can email us, ladies and gentlemen, those that would like to donate to this ministry that we can continue on with this ministry and further this ministry. Glory to Yahweh. And help those that want to leave Babylon to come here, ladies and gentlemen, in Kenya, Africa. We welcome your offerings. We appreciate it. And it will go to a ministry that you, lady, we don't abuse any not one penny to come in this ministry glory to yahweh we're concerned about the people living in babylon uh, the u.s and her allies ladies and gentlemen people living in the west even in the uh, um, the west indies the bahamas all in those areas ladies and gentlemen and brazil glory to yahweh we're concerned about you that want to leave because when the fireworks come Amen. Those living in the West Indies, when the, the, those nukes come, when China and Russia, North Korea, and some of these uh, Islamic countries, amen, they start shooting these missiles and uh, nukes uh, towards America. All the people living in the, the Bahamas, close to the United States, West Indies, 
uh, parts of South America, Mexico, they're going to be obliterated. All of these people are going to be obliterated, living in the Western Hemisphere. They're going to be obliterated. And then they're going to attack uh, not only uh, Babylon, but Babylon's um, allies, UK, Taiwan, ladies and gentlemen, Australia, Canada, France, all these allies of the U.S., they're going to be bombarded, too, with these nukes. Glory to Yahweh. Japan. So, amen, everybody that's her allies, they're going to be hit too. So if you're living in any of these areas, if you, if you live in a country that's an ally with the U.S., you best to leave now. You best to, because the Bible says she's called the mother of harlots. She have daughters. She have allies. Glory to Yahweh. They just like her. They just like their mama. She corrupted them too with all this filthiness and debauchery and immorality and and, and trash, her music industry, her Hollywood industry, just trash, ladies and gentlemen, and all, and her pornography industry. I corrupted them too, ladies and gentlemen. Amen. This goes on and on. But we thank Yahweh for you. Well, um, until next time, may Yahweh continue to bless you and smile on you, is our prayers. Peace and blessings. Shalom. Shalom.